So I got to the gospel lesson today when I was looking at him, and I, I got to thinking, of all gospel lessons for me to get at this time, time of year, I get to talk about soil and the best kind of soil for growth to a church full of farmers. Now, I'm going to guess when it comes to farming, you guys can probably tell me better what the soil is going to do and what kind of soil you need. Now, what I do love is that our Lord loves to use stuff like this as a parable to try and get us to think about what He's trying to say to us. So I'm going to start. I, I love that in this lesson today, not only does He give the parable, but He explains it. He tells us a little bit more and expands on it. And so we start with Matthew 13, 5 and 6, when Jesus says, seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And they sprang up quickly since they had no depth. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Now, when I read that, it makes a lot of sense to me. And I find it interesting to think that something can actually sprout up in rocky soil. And then, since it has no root, it just doesn't last there. And then, the sun comes up, causes it to wither away, and thus die. Now, this part of the story does make enough sense to me that I know if I'm going to plant something, I'm definitely not going to use rocky soil because I want it to last for a while. But, later in the Gospel, the Lord does decide to give us a little more explanation as He tells us, for what is sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the Word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet, such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution come on account of the Word, that person immediately falls away. When I hear that, I think of the people that I've met in my life. I've met enough people and I've seen those people that you meet them and you think, wow, these people have such amazing faith. They have such strong faith. They were raised in an amazing faith-driven family. They were brought up in church. They were deep into the Word. But, some of those people are the ones that you watch turn their backs on their faith. They turn their backs on God when things get rough. And this is usually a time when something happens and they just could not find the answer that they needed for that difficult time in their lives. Now, something that tends to bug some of us ministers just a little bit is we have what we call prosperity preachers now these preachers don't get me wrong they are good preachers they preach the word and they do a great job but what they're doing is they're telling people of all the wonderful things that are going to come into your life because you simply believe in god which is great good things do happen to believers but for those prosperity pre preachers, the one thing that they struggle with is having the answers in difficult times. Because they're so focused on the good things that are going to happen, they don't always know what to say when bad things happen to good people. And when that happens, that's when you see people that turn away from their faith and become symbolic of that rocky soil that has faith, but it doesn't endure. It is in these moments when these people are turning from these teachings and not wanting to believe in, God, believe in a God that can allow bad things to happen. It is in these moments 
that we see who has the strong faith that is embedded deep, deep in their hearts, taking root, able to take hold in the depths of our hearts so that we do not stray from the Lord during those tough times. Instead, holding on and our faith gets stronger when we hold on in those moments. Knowing that the Lord that each and every one of us believes in will be there and will get us through that danger. Now I know I've said this before in other sermons, but I want to say it again because this is something I feel very strongly about. When we have difficult times in our lives, it's not always just about how we handle the difficult times, which is very important to know how we handle them, but I really do think what matters a lot is how we come out on the other end. Are we better because of what we've been through? So then, we hear the Lord go on and talk about another type of soil. When He said, other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Now to me, that is pretty self-explanatory when it comes to faith. Letting us know that if you try to grow something among the thorns, that those thorns will overpower what you're trying to grow. It's going to choke it, and it is going to kill what you're trying to grow. However, for those hearing just those words from our Lord may not fully understand. And we have such a wonderful Lord that He will go ahead and explain it for us like He did the last. When He tells us that as for that was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the Word, but cares, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke that word, and it yields nothing. So that makes a lot more sense when you get the get a better explanation to it. And I think of all of the worldly pleasures that are waiting for us as soon as we walk out these doors of this church. Those pleasures that are there to tempt us, to lure us, to get us to stray away from God and the teachings that are laid out for all of us. Now, we can choose to keep the Word of the Lord close to our hearts and do all that we can to avoid the sinful ways of the world that awaits us, or we can let the world devour our thoughts and control all of our actions, choking the Word of the Lord out of our hearts and killing it and destroying what the Lord wants from us, therefore causing us to yield nothing. Unfortunately, not all those who hear the word of the Lord will follow or even believe everything that they are hearing. And thus, they become those examples of that thorny and that rocky soil that the word is being planted in. We see these kinds of people in our world. And we see them fake their way through life, causing us to believe them to be good, strong followers of the Lord. But when push comes to shove, they are only believers on the surface. And the Word is not taking root in their hearts. Therefore, letting what the Lord is planting in us wither away and die. 
We have this wonderful psalm lesson today. I really like it. I like the entire thing. And it tells us all about the faithfulness as it tells us that I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are my joy. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. Wow. I love that psalm. The psalmist is telling the Lord that he wants to follow the decrees, his statutes, his ordinances, his laws. All in all, the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord wants each and every one of us to do. To follow His words and stay true to everything the Lord is asking of us. My favorite part of this psalm is the opening line. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I love that. Because all the Lord wants us to do is follow His Word because that Word is going to be the lamp and the light that is going to guide us through all the difficult times and it will bring us a bright light in those darkened moments. There will be moments in our lives when we, when we feel like it's so dark that we can't see the light. The light is difficult to find. And it is in these moments that we need to dive deeper and deeper into the Word so that that Word can continue to be the light. And the deeper we go, the brighter that light is going to be and the quicker it's going to get us out of that darkness. Which brings me to the last soil that Jesus talks about. When he says other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. All those who have ears, the Lord wants us to listen and allow the word to be that light unto our paths that we are all being led down. As He did for the others, our Lord graciously clarified this last piece of soil. When He tells us that what was sown on good soil is the one who hears the Word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit. Those who hear the Word and understand it and allow it to take the deep root in our hearts will be those who bear the kind of fruit that our Lord is desiring us to bear. Now we do need to be careful. We definitely need to be careful in our lives to not let evil in and not let it cause us to doubt the teachings of our Lord, as the Gospel lesson does warn us when it says anyone, he, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown in the path. The evil one will come in when we doubt. 
The evil one's going to come in when we stop trusting and listening to the Word of the Lord. It is up to us to stop letting the evil one come in and tempt us. To to stop letting the evil one control our thoughts and our actions and continue to stay steeped in the Word and let these teachings of the Lord take deep root in us. We are to be that good soil that the Lord's talking about. So I pray for all of us here today that we all continue to let the Lord take root in our hearts with His Word. To let it be deep so that we can get those deep roots that produce some of the most wonderful and amazing fruit that we can ever see. And that we do not ever let the evil or sinful ways remove those deep roots from our hearts. I pray that we all allow the Word of our Lord to be the lamp, to be the light as we walk along the path that has been laid out for us by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that none of us resemble the thorny, or rocky path. Instead, we all continue to be the rich soil that produces the best fruit possible. Love and blessings to you all this morning.